Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Mikey Garcia rebuttals top rank and talks about fights with top rank fighters like Lomachenko, Terrence Crawford, and explains the Gamboa situation. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button and also subscribe for the latest greatest of boxing if you want to become part of the notification gang gang hit the bell icon shout out to the super chats all the channel donations and the patreon shout out to ellie Secback, es news link in the description he conducted a facetime interview with mikey garcia he's fresh off the adrian broner win i thought he looked good he controlled the distance and kind of did what he wanted got off first and great underrated body attack he did what he had to do moving up now he has options he can go back to lightweight where he's still a champion there's people that want to see him fight top rank fighters he talked about a lot in this es news interview again link in the description but i made a video about vasil lomachenko he said basically he didn't see nothing outstanding he said yes mikey garcia beat broner but he almost got put to sleep I think that, I don't know, you know fighters take jabs. I, I was at the fight and I didn't see it being all that boring. I think Broner obviously could have let his hands go, but you have to give credit to Mikey Garcia. Obviously, to me, when fighters freeze up and we're not used to seeing them, like Broner always fights in spots and spurts and doesn't always let his hands go, but never really to that extent. So to me, I got to give Mikey Garcia credit for that because I haven't really seen Broner that hesitant. Usually... And I was tweeting this live as I was watching the fight. Broner is kind of a notorious slow starter, but come second half, he starts opening up. He did it with Pauli Malignaggi. Pauli was winning some early rounds, getting him with the volume and kind of bringing the fight to him. And then Broner started to open up, land good shots. Even in the Maidana fight where he was badly hurt, knocked down twice, he started to open up. But he never could really get off in this fight. Weight might have something to do with it, but the rest is clearly Mikey Garcia what he was doing the accuracy the timing Mikey has respectable power and things like that and he was just kind of dictating the pace getting off first and suppressing Broner's spots where he was doing good and um, landing some stuff so according to top ranks Todd DeBuff he says Mikey still after that performance not a big star in this ES News interview Mikey Garcia kind of rebuttals a lot of those situations and he says I make my own decisions I handle my own career I love where I'm at I love being where I'm at because of certain fighters because if certain fighters are not available I'll go on to the next one and they can't do that that's why top ranked fighters recently are fighting just opponents because they have nothing else to offer and we're not we're going after bigger fights top rank definitely has other plans for their fighters and it's not in their best interest or top rank doesn't see it in their best interest to bring my name around in the discussion he also goes on to talk about potential fights um like danny garcia i talked about this a long time ago ego matchmakers and garcia versus garcia or garcia squared i think is a great fight if they can get that done that would be very very good he and mikey said in this interview maybe we can get that by the end of the year i think that's a phenomenal fight but looking at other things he talked about the past fight with gamboa and he's he's kind of still rebuttaling top rank mikey said well he's gonna have to bring up the yuri Yorkis gamboa situation and try to down talk me i'm not his fighter so he can't speak nicely maybe they're still a little upset that we left but you know, the fight with Yuri Yorkis Gamboa never happened because it only came with another extension onto my contract and I wasn't willing to extend any terms on the contract. We were willing to fight Gamboa back then, but under separate terms, not any extensions. And he knows that. He don't have to lie, but whatever, it's in the past. Like I said, I'm moving on with my career. I'm looking for big fights and we're taking big challenges. I'm not gonna wait and sit around for anybody. So that's from Mikey Garcia. I like Mikey Garcia's attitude post the top rank, legal, two year sideline, whatever you want to call it, hiatus, retirement, semi-retirement. I like how he's, he's, he's handled business. He fought Elias Rojas on a major card, Leo Santa Cruz, Carl Frampton won, which was a fight of the year for that fight year, 2016. Came back, knocked out Dejan's Latishnin, made short work of a champion, easy work, his first fight at lightweight, and then he fought Broner. I mean, I'm not Lomachenko and I'm not top rank. So me personally, I could say nice things about whatever. And from being there live, I was impressed with Mikey Garcia's performance because some people didn't like the pace. But I mean, it's, it's just when you're in there with a fundamentally sound, skillful guy with certain attributes, 
it's going to make the fight a certain way. And if it looked too one-sided, you got to give credit. Floyd does this all the time to guys. Floyd, you put Robert Guerrero in there with Floyd, it looks super one-sided. You put Canelo when he fought Floyd in 2013 in there with Floyd, look one-sided, etc. And the list goes on and on. There's far and few in between fighters who really pushed it and made Floyd work more than what he wanted to or whatever and made for competitive fights. But that's what happens when you have fundamental sound guys who know what to do. Now, I'm not comparing Mikey to Floyd because they do a lot different. I think Floyd is, is more of a, a sharpshooter and a sniper, more athletic. I would say maybe Mikey goes to the body a bit more than this current version of Floyd, things like that. But all in all, they're both fundamentally sound. You know what I mean? They just have different approaches to the game. But like I said, when you have technique, it freezes people up, makes them gun shy, makes them think twice. And they're trying to figure stuff out in there, trying to, to crack the code. And Mikey Garcia even said post fight at the press conference that a lot of people see him from TV and they're not thinking it's going to be anything crazy. Like, oh, what does he do? And there's a lot of guys. I think me personally, I think Danny Garcia is one of those guys where you watch him on TV. You're like, oh, man, if you're a fighter in his weight class, you're probably, I can beat him. And then you get in there and it's it's not what you think It's different because he's not doing anything. Roy Jones esque where he's just flying from three pre three feet back and landing a vicious uppercut out of nowhere you know what i mean hands down and dancing he's not doing all that but again these guys have mastered their styles and technique so this was a good interview with mikey garcia he kind of clarified the yuri york is gamboa the situation kind of didn't look good because it looked like top rank wanted to fight gamboa and 50 cent something special man they look like they wanted to fight but he gave his his side of it and he's saying that they wanted an extension which is something that promoters do they say hey you want this fight you got to sign with us another two years or whatever the clause is or whatever the extension is and he sounded like he wanted to get out of the contract and he was willing to fight him but not under those terms and sometimes when you can't agree then you just it's like what's the word it's like a stalemate where you got it's just a, you're at a standstill promoter wants you to extend in order to promise you this purse and this payday in this fight and you don't want to you you want to fight that person but either way um i think it was kind of a missed opportunity again i can't speak on garcia's career he was he was on the fast track uh if he wanted to be on the sidelines for two years for something he believed in and if he's content going through that that's you know what i mean team garcia what what they feel but I would have liked to see the Gamboa fight, and he, he allowed kind of Terrence Crawford. If you look at it, Terrence Crawford's star-making performance was the Gamboa fight. That's the fight that really put him on the map. I, myself, reporting, covering boxing, I had been checking for him for a minute when he had dreads and stuff like that. So I had watched the Braves press guide. He had another fight right after that. But the the one that really put him on the map, I think, is the, the Gamboa. He was undefeated, slickster, speed, power, and Terrence Crawford had a... He had to make some things happen. But one thing Garcia said in the fight, when Ellie asked him about fighting Pacquiao, fighting Terrence Crawford, fighting Vasily Lomachenko, he gave praise to those fighters. And he also said those three, Pacquiao, Lomachenko, and Crawford, would all be more competitive and basically more difficult fights than Gamboa. He, he believes he can beat Gamboa. It sounds like easy work. And he would have been the easiest of the bunch. I want to know what you guys think. Would Mikey Garcia at the time when he was still in the 126, 130 pound division, whatever division, would he have beat Yuriorkis Gamboa before Terrence Crawford, before Gamboa just quit, before all of that? Would he have beat that version of Gamboa? And who was at fault for that fight not happening? I wanna know what you guys think. Drop that in the comment section. Me, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see Lomachenko versus Rigondeaux before Mikey Garcia, but I think that's an easier fight to make. You know what I mean? I, I really see some bad blood with top rank and, and Garcia. I mean, they're speaking out and like, oh, I wasn't that impressed. He didn't really, he wasn't in a scintillating fight. And Lomachenko's talking about Garcia. The president's talking about Garcia. You know what I'm saying? So anytime you have that, from my perspective, it makes fights harder to get made. Same thing with Mayweather Pacquiao. It got to a point where both sides are like, you know what I mean? Talking about each other. Freddie Roach is talking bad about Floyd. Aram's like, Mayweather, he's a barring fighter. And Pacquiao saying his thing and Mayweather saying his thing, Floyd seen, and it just 
that's not how business is handled and it's just like some bloods and crips stuff you're never going to have any kind of peace treaties or agreements if both sides are just warring and verbal sparring throughout the media you know what i mean if they really want to get this vasil lomachenko mikey garcia fight and do a joint co-promotion then they have to really figure out the parameters because so far lomachenko's been fighting on hbo mikey's been on showtime you have to work out those bugs and those details it can happen but if it's a pissing contest then it won't happen so mikey garcia sounds not pessimistic but he, he's basically saying the ball's in their court if it's a fair offer we can bring him over to the showtime and stuff we just don't know the logistics you know what i mean so i'm not gonna hold my breath because i've seen this too many times where this cold war or feuds and all that happen and then the fights never get made so I want to see Mikey Garcia in a big fight. He still has some people over there on um, the Al Heyman side that he could fight, like Danny Garcia, which they talked about. I think that's a great fight. Um, I think Lomachenko should really fight Rigging out first before moving up to lightweight. If he moves up to lightweight, the, the Rigging out fight's off, and that's a fight I want to see two of the best people out of the amateur circuit. That's my thoughts. Mikey Garcia, he's, he's looking for big fights, and he really deserves it. Knocking out a lightweight champion and... He has some options. I would like Robert Easter Jr., Jorge Linares. He's fighting Campbell. The winner of that fight, I think, would be a good fight. Danny Garcia, if Garcia wants to move up again to 47, or I don't know if Garcia can make a catch weight, but there's some options aside from Lomachenko. But I don't want it to be another Gamboa Garcia situation where it's a mega fight at the time and it just falls behind the wayside mike garcia terrence crawford and dongo winner would be phenomenal you know what i mean there's some options it's just like i said it's just a matter of setting pride aside and working out the logistics with two sides that don't always see eye to eye let me know what should be next for mike garcia link in the description for the interview drop your thoughts in the comment section make sure you smash a like button as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing.